Um, we also have the Global Times newspaper, NASIT engages COVEC West Africa Limited. Ex-President Koroma to return soon. Malado Associates clarifies. And Chinese Ambassador donates to police. From the Global Times newspaper, we we'll take the Daybreak newspaper. And on its front page, Speaker disgraces Mohammed Bangura. And Sea Coach responds to investigation after discovery of illegal drugs in unclaimed luggage. And uh, the last newspaper that we have is the Night Watch newspaper. Doubt, fear over Kush tax force. Kush and Coop. Um, more arrests, more chips. APC's brown envelope bloggers. So those are the headline stories from our new, uh, local newspapers. And as I said earlier, to join me discuss these headlines, I have with me Solomon Sundu, who is a civil society activist. Good morning and welcome to Friends Page. Good morning. Salfo, good morning, viewers. All right. And flanked by me also, I have Minkai Lukuruma, who is a political analyst and a social commentator. Good morning and welcome to Friends Page. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay. So um, we'll start with our first story on the AYV newspaper. Um, I think when they launched the, uh, the human development reports by UNDP. That was the first time uh, Vice President Dr. Mohammed Julde Jalo made the statement that even if, like, wh whoever is being arrested, the dealers or those in the Kush business, even if they come with 150 uh, lawyers, they won't be granted bail. And he reiterated it during the town hall meeting on Kush that was organized by the Ministry of uh, Information and Civic Education. And just a few days ago, also, they engaged the security sector at uh, ONS. And by then, he also reiterated but increased the number that on the two occasions, he said 150. But now, even if you have uh, 200 lawyers or legal practitioners to defend you, you won't be granted bail. And that statement sparked divided opinions, uh, especially for uh, those in the legal uh, practition. And today, this newspaper is, is saying, because some were saying uh, that statement is kind of, is not in line with what the Constitution uh, is saying. So for you, I'll start with uh, Solomon Sindhu. Uh, what do you make up of that specific statement and the divided opinions, especially by lawyers? Yes, I think, um, you know, the statement for the vice president is, for me, it seems to appear, you know, when accusations were levied against names that we are not supposed to be named mm. in drug, you know, um, related cases or matters. Mm. And over the period, you know, we had about names coming out and he himself, the vice president, mm. his name was being mentioned that, okay. you know, uh, I mean, he's conniving with people who are in this business mm. or his associates are in this business. Mm. A lot of, you know, you know, alleged this we are all allegedly, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so we add again about you know the president needs about you know uh, you know connections with you know guys who are dealing with this substance. Mm -hmm. So if you look at you know the anger, right? You know your name was not supposed to be in area of drug mm. and and it was mentioned it, and it was mentioned, you know. The, the vice president is a second gentleman, and his statement for me is like cautioning people who think that the law, you know, they will, they will, they will subvert the law, right? Mm. Because we heard about a case 
in Pujon, where they went with the case and charged the matter to court, and they later grant you know, the individual bail mm. due to other interventions. Okay. So it's like those <coughs> statements emanated from there. And okay. if you remember, if you can recall, okay. when we were <coughs> at Parliament mm. on the stakeholder meeting, mm -hmm. they said even the member of Parliament at that, you know, within that district, he mentioned also that. So if they were to penalize those people who have been caught mm. or nab into these drug, you know, issues, you know, he's emphasizing that no matter the lawyers you have, right, you will not be bailed. But you look at the other side of justice. Mm. And thank God in the town hall meeting, the Anthony General was there and he said, you know, drug related matters, the, you know, the act they were using, the pharmacies act, it was not suffice for them to charge people. You will see they will find somebody for cannabis activa mm. for one leon or two leons. This were a key because laws, so obsolete. Yeah. Exactly. So he was trying to emphasize that the laws they will use now is the National Drug Act that was passed <coughs> in 2008, mm. amended. Yeah. So if they were to deal with those law, the law tells you that they will if that, you know sentence you if you are found guilty, mm. right, from five years, you know, and fine will be level. You pay both, or they will increase. And the law again will tell you that they will you know if you have been caught. As a trafficker, mm -hmm. they will seize all your belongings or property. Okay. So those were the laws the Anthony General was emphasizing. And you add about, I mean, you add from the the the, 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 the justice, mm. uh, so who was the the the, the justice? Is it Momoja Stephen mm. was representing the judicial, uh, the 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 the, 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 the judiciary. Yeah, exactly. So you had them saying they are there to dispense the law and interpret the constitution. So for me, that's the caveat. It doesn't matter the language of the, the, vice, the president. vice president. Okay. But in as much as matter, right, or all cases that have been charged to court, it's left with the lawyers, I mean the, 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 the magistrates and the judges to precise over it as the laws, you know, um, 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 interpret. Okay. You understand? Right. Or they are there to interpret the constitution or as the act amended in 2008, mm. they are there to do so. Okay. So the only emphasis here is the political will, that it does not matter your position or connection, whether it be with the president or vice president, if you, you found one day, thing, exactly. you, need to, you yeah. have to go through <clears throat> the law and let the law say you are free. Okay. That's my interpretation. All right. Um, Minkailu, so mm. what's your, because now it has sparked a debate, divided uh, opinions, okay. Yeah, especially in the area of uh, like it is not in line with the constitution especially that the the rights of people are being trampled upon by that statement yes uh, that is just a statement mm. yeah it is just a statement which cannot be equated to trampling <coughs> upon the right of any individual okay for me it's an hyperbole mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. It's an exaggeration because of the circumstance. Okay. I believe so. That is my op honest opinion. Okay. But you see, uh, the law is the law. Yeah? Uh, the law is uh, a different realm altogether. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is presumption of innocence. Mm -hmm. There is equality before the law. Mm -hmm. And judges' decisions are legally guided. Okay. They are not discretionary. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if somebody is being accused of uh, dealing in kush or smoking kush, and charged to court, that person will be given a fair trial, and if the person is innocent, I don't think the person will be detained or remanded. Okay. The judge will use the law to make a decision. Mm. So the vice president, I believe, was only being very much maybe hyperbolical because of the surrounding circumstances and the accusations and all. Okay. I have been engaged in many, many, many debates uh, that has got to do with Kush. Okay. Even before coming to AIB front page, I was engaged this morning between the hours of 9 to 10 mm -hmm. by Radio Shalom in uh, Falabar district. They were also discussing Kush. You know, it has become very hard part, you know, affecting people adversely. So I think that is the reason why the vice president was very emphatic. Uh, there was a circumstance in which I was also asked that um, 
it has been alleged that a lot of politicians are involved mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the coach deal. Okay. I told them I have no evidence to so accuse anybody. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have the criminal investigation department. If anybody is involved in the dealing of coach, it is their responsibility, as we stated the other day, to ensure that they work collaboratively with other institutions, including ONS, mm -hmm. to conduct a very thorough investigation and go after those individuals. We were very skeptical the other day about the state of emergency. Well, I was very skeptical. Mm -hmm. The civil society <laughs> guys have been very much emphatic, calling mm -hmm. on president to ensure that the state of emergency is imposed mm -hmm. yeah, or mm -hmm. is passed. I did say the state of emergency is welcoming, but the implementation Station. now is the That's problem. Where you were concerned. And that is why I am still making this emphasis mm -hmm. that it is welcoming because of the circumstance. Mm -hmm. We cannot allow Kush to continue to destroy our young people. But then, when it comes to the implementation, let the law be followed to the latter. Okay. Let ensure we go after people who are actually involved in the deal of Kush mm -hmm. and not go after innocent people in the name of politics. Okay. That is a fear. All right. So, uh, going back to the statement of uh, the vice president, uh, over the weekend, he met with some journalists. And one of the journalists he met with was uh, an AYV journalist. And he explained why the reason that prompted that statement. Uh, I'll just read some paragraphs from the, the, the write-up and you can uh, make your comment. Uh, he says, speaking to AYV News, Vice President Jalo said he made the pronouncement in his capacity as chairman of the police council. He said, in my capacity at the uh, chairman of the police council, I have summoned all my police commanders and instructed them not to grant bail to anyone arrested with the substance whilst in police custody, regardless of legal representation. This is within my authority as chairman of the police council. He said lately, the police have been proactive in arresting illegal drugs uh, dealers, but that one's uh, that once they are in police custody, you will see lawyers storming the police stations to seek their bails. He said when once they, they, the dealers, are granted bail, they will return to the same communities, and those communities will in turn accuse the police of releasing the suspect to recommit the same crimes. So now, uh, when arrested by the police, we will deny them bail, but instead, we will fast track their police investigations, complete their case files, and charge them to court within the shortest possible time. After that, let the lawyers go to the court and apply for their bail. If bail is granted by the court, then so be it. Uh, but henceforth, no bail will be granted to anyone arrested with the substance whilst in police custody, regardless of legal representation the vice president re-echoed. So with uh, what he has explained, what's your take now on the statement? Yeah, initially, upon glancing at the headline, mm -hmm. I did see uh, the law is a different realm altogether, yeah. and that uh, judges' decisions are guided legally, they are mm -hmm. not discretionary, mm -hmm. but then this is a detailed explanation, okay. and it is justifiable. Yeah. It is within the realm of the vice president, so, so decide. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, yes, we've seen circumstances it will people are arrested for certain crimes when they are at the police station they will, they will use their connections to make calls and they are released and mm -hmm. that is what is bad even society will not treat you seriously if that happens yes because yeah, even yeah. that's what he's saying sure. because uh, the police have called on uh, citizens themselves to also join them in the fight against the kush problem yes. so if as citizens we have provided uh, information that led to the arrest of somebody who is involved in the in the act and mm -hmm. a few minutes or maybe some hours later that person comes back mm -hmm. and do the same thing mm -hmm. uh i don't think yes nobody will take it seriously okay yes and, and that is also the reason why in fact some uh police officers will decide to negotiate at the scene where the arrest is being made mm -hmm. and if they are bad they will, they will take the bribe because mm -hmm. they are aware that if we take this person to the police station, the person may use his or her connections, mm -hmm. you know, to get bail. Mm -hmm. Just very recently, I was driving in a traffic, and few young people were talking about coach. Mm -hmm. I was paying attention attentively that uh, in our area, you know, quote and unquote, they go arrest all my way to sell coach, 
But you man give them 40 million on the left hand, they left the Kushner hand and not even take her. Hmm. Yes. So this holy month of Ramadan. I swear to this holy month of Ramadan. Yes. By young people. That tells you the vice president is spot on. Mm -hmm. His statement is justifiable. Okay. Bill must be denied so that the police will take it seriously, society will take it seriously. Yeah. But then he has also said if it is, if the matter is now charged to the court, it is left to the court to now use the law yeah. and it convicts or acquit and discharge the person. That is just all right. So that's yeah. that that uh, clarify yeah. the, 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 the the divided opinions sure, because sure. he's not saying that yeah. if the matter in, it is yeah. in court he, you are you will not be granted bail. He has not attempted to yes. interfere with, with the, the court. court. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. So what uh, what's your take on that? I, I, I his think, explanation. I think we have said it all. Mm. And when you look at just like what my brother mentioned here, I think few days some people called me that Solomon, with all this advocacy you guys are doing, we are seeing people who have been arrested and now they have been released mm. from the police. And the um, justification therein, right? For me, the vice president said what he's supposed to you know, say mm -hmm. about this Kush um, trafficker or those who have been caught. It's right to justify it. So for me, it's left with the law. When the matter has been charged, that's what I said mm. earlier in my early submission. Let the law decide, right? And the judge will not sit there with all the cases within Kush and just release the individuals based on the law, just mm. like what my brother mentioned. Mm. But for the area of the police, I think they need to be serious. Okay. It's not just for you to go and make, you know, arrest. Mm. At the end of the day, when, you know, money we are giving or bribes, so to speak, allegedly, then you release those people. Okay. Charge them to court. You have no reason to release anybody. For as long as you have charged and you have substance that can, you know, be tendered as evidence, I think you have the right to charge the individual to court. Okay. So the vice president's statement is justifiable. Okay. And uh, also, still in, on the kush, we've seen where the address of the president, he also sent a stern warning to those involved in the production, trade, and uh, all sort of that, that their time is up. And in few remarks, what do you make up of the president's uh, address a few days ago? Yeah, like I have always stated, we had, you know, wanted the president to come out and make a very strong statement regarding mm -hmm. Kush. Mm -hmm. we, we were here the other day, you are giving us, you know, uh, statistics in chronological order mm. that Dr. Jalo had emphasized this in a press conference mm. that the issue of Kush, you know, must be treated with the utmost seriousness it deserves. Mm. This is welcoming, like I have always maintained. The only thing now is that uh, the statement of the president must be treated with utmost seriousness and must be implemented to the fullest. Okay. It must not be used as a political witch hunt. Okay. Yeah, or, and again, it must not go after other innocent citizens to settle scores. Okay. That is what we don't want to see. All right. But it is incumbent now on the IG to ensure that the CID, you know, Criminal Investigation Department, is empowered, that ONS must activate you know, their, their various branches to mm. go and, and ensure that... Uh, the, the, there is a complete disconnection. We have a lot of illegal crossing points. Mm. They must have to be very vigilant in manning those checkpoints, those crossing points, and to also go after those that are doing the production in country mm. to cut off the supply of Kush. Okay. That will help. All right. Yes. Shortly before we go to it's, the it's, it's a welcoming, mm. you know, the, the news for us to see the president coming out. That was my point that he should come out and you know make a statement and a, vi a very vi vibrant one. Mm. But he also mentioned that, you know, government alone cannot That's fight right. the fight against Kush. Mm. It means that the community is needed, collaborations are needed within ministries, departments and agencies. Mm. So that was our call. And what we will emphasize is the political witch hunting. And I know the been, um, and to the general, they will frame laws that you know we just you know be within the Kush and not other reasons, yeah, right? Because illegal we don't want to see exactly. We don't want to see where they will use it against you know political opponents to score political goals. We are against that and we we'll condemn that. And I don't think that was the reason why the president made the you know declaration. He made it for us to come together. Mm. And you saw it exactly where he said, with the Kush Melis, 
he cannot able to achieve his human capacity building mm. and all what he's putting in place, right? And that was our call for us not to go and seek, you know, human resource from other country. We have our own people languishing. Let's bring them together. And even the rehab center, right? It should not just be a rehab. Mm. All the recommendations we made, we spoke here about reintegration, right? On the other day, I was here on this day. Those were the recommendations. When you talk about rehab center, you think of how you, t you should reintegrate that individual into society. Okay. Whether that individual was dropped out of school or from university or from any training institution, right? Mm. So we need to do the reintegration properly. And he mentioned about, you know, the, the, the tax force. Those structures were already there. Mm. It's for them to <clears throat> just, you know, revive them. And my recommendation also would be now the toll-free line. Let them open a toll-free line, right, on Kush mm. or any substance abuse so that the community will take part in the fight. And also he mentioned about the paramount chiefs. These were the people, you know, we need to bring them on board okay. if we are to fight against this Nelis. Bring them on board. The paramount chief, they have, you know, large constituency in there. The chief done, you have the, you know, section chiefs, you have the town chief, you have the village headmen. They can bring them together and know exactly the way forward in fighting. Fight in the okay, yeah, exactly. so away from the Kush fight, um, Nigeria has given an update on the former president Koroma's health condition. And also because at some point, some people were uh, questioning why have they not been uh, updating. updating the public on his status, but he also explained the reasons why that was not done. So I will just read some of the, uh, yes, in the, so you will know exactly what uh, the Nigeria's foreign minister uh, said. He says, um, Nigeria's uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Yusuf Toga, has disclosed that former president of Sierra Leone, Anes Bai Koroma, is expected to return to Sierra Leone within three months after completing medical treatment in Abuja. Ambassador Tuga made this revelation during a uh, gathering with members of the Diplomatic Correspondents Association of Nigeria in Abuja. Addressing concerns about Kuruma's presence in Nigeria, Ambassador Tuga clarified that the former Sierra Leonean leader currently re resides uh, in Nigeria for medical response. He emphasized that Kuruma's stay in Nigeria was aimed at alleviating tensions in Sierra Leone. I believe he's away for some medical treatment. He will return in a while. I think three months, uh, but this is where he is residing. He's safe and sound here, stated Ambassador Tuga. He further explained that the rationale behind maintaining discretion regarding Kuruma's presence, noting the importance of avoiding unnecessary attention that could potentially escalate tensions in Sierra Leone. We don't want a situation where he's residing here and we continue to speak about him and he's attracting a lot of attention. And maybe he's even been put in an awkward position where he has to start speaking and then that defeats the purpose of us diffusing the tension in Sierra Leone, Ambassador uh, Tugat remarked. So I'm gonna start with you on this, uh, Minkailu, since you are also a member of uh, the All People's Congress Party. Uh, the foreign minister is saying, in addition to the medical condition, one of the reasons also that they accepted for him to be hosted in Nigeria is to reduce the tension in Sierra Leone, especially when he was uh, accused of uh, being part of the uh, November 26 attempted coup. Yes, thank you. You know, you are, you are very right. Aside of me being one of the members of the All People's Congress Party, mm. I am also officially one of the party's spokesperson. Okay. So I think I am also better positioned to, to talk, to on, talk this. on this. Okay. You know, um, the foreign minister has stated the painful elaboration of the obvious. Mm -hmm. It's very spot on. Yeah. Uh, we 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 have noticed yeah, that uh, aside the fact that 
he was having some health conditions mm. and needed medical attention immediately, mm -hmm. but it was also a me mechanism to alleviate tensions in Sierra Leone and avoid unnecessary attention, mm. as he put forward, he, he has put forward. Okay. That is very correct, and I agree with him. Yeah, uh, uh, when he was accused of being part of the no, uh, November, you know, attempted coup, mm. you saw the tensions. Even when he was uh, taken from McKinney to Freetown, and when he was coming to the CID, mm. you see the place is always very jam-packed. You know, when checkpoints were mounted at his house, the presence of military and police, the area was actually not very conducive. Mm. You know, people were, you know, being checked, cars and vehicles were being checked, and the, the, the community was actually not a place where people were very happy. Mm. So, but one thing that I want to make abundantly clear here is that uh, mm -hmm. we do not want to see this situation of uh, former presidents not residing in their own countries. I think they have to speedily conclude the trial and acquit and discharge him if he's in innocent. We want to see that. Uh, in made preparation for his retirement. Okay. He's one person that had never wanted to live out of Sierra Leone. He had wanted to reside to, in Sierra Leone and be here forever. Yeah. And then I am not um, making any, casting any aspersions, but I also think that um, government mo must work mechanisms in place in line with the um, Bintumani Agreement for National Unity. Mm. There is a whole resolution dealing with intra-party dialogue, mm. the APC and the SLPP, in which they, they should sit and discuss national issues to see that this whole thing is laid to rest. A fair trial is conducted, the trial is on, and a speedy trial is also assured so that those who are innocent can be acquitted and discharged and go the, about their normal businesses. I don't want to see any former president not having the opportunity to live and reside in his own country. Okay. You see, we are we have imported a different system of governance. Yeah, we imported democracy from the West. Mm. But the West, these are very civilized people. When we go to UK, they have been prime ministers. Eh? Uh, 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 Cameron, Boris Johnson, mm. Tony Blair. They are all residing in the UK. None of them is in exile. Okay. You go to America, you see the Jimmy Carter, the Bill Clinton, the George Bush Jr., mm. the Barack Obama, they're all residing in America. Okay. Some of them participate in politics by only coming on board when it is campaign period to campaign for their parties and mm. their candidates. You know, that does not mean we must not copy that on a good examples from oh, them. From them. Yeah. So I, yes, I saw so, I saw Makisal in oh, Senegal. That's, that's what I, because yesterday yeah. I was just discussing with a colleague journalist yeah. that most often, I, I was asking them, why does uh, our leaders do not learn from the West? I said, because I made an example with the US. All the past presidents of the US, all of them are, are living in the United States. But, but we've just seen after um, the new president uh, in Senegal was sworn in, Macky Sall left for Morocco or so. And I was asked at France or somewhere to, to, why is that? So why do we normally have these problems in Africa? We should not have this problem in Africa. So you are, you are one of the politicians. Yes, yes, I am saying we should not have it. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you must not see that. I don't want to see President Bureau residing out of Sierra after his tenure, mm. as established by the Constitution. Okay. He has got two terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was elected in 2018. He elected in 2023. He's serving a term. If he completes his term, I don't want to see him residing out of Salio. He must be prepared to have a retirement package for himself, to reside in country and, and enjoy the privileges of a, an elderly state man. That is the example we must copy from other countries. Mm. Go to Nigeria, for example. Past presidents are residing in Nigeria. Nigeria is actually demonstrating that they are big brother in Africa. Okay. Uh, Obasanjo is residing, Bambajida is residing, even Buhari, they are all residing in Nigeria. So why can't we copy good examples from other people? You know, uh, when you are in the opposition, it is our responsibility to now, after serving judiciously, you are now in the opposition. After serving, you should be an elderly state man. Mm -hmm. It is our responsibility to advise where necessary and to also ensure that peace and sanity is maintained in the country. So I want to see all former presidents residing in Sierra Leone. I want to see a circumstance in which Ernest Microma will be acquitted and discharged if he is innocent and be allowed to come back to the country and reside peacefully without harassment. Okay. So, um, Solomon, what's your take on the update and what we've been discussing, the elaborations he's made? 
Yeah, Maybe. I think I want to take, and I took a few notes of the foreign <coughs> minister's <Okay>. statements. <coughs> One me. Yeah. that he said um, is for the peace and tranquility <coughs> in mm. Sierra Leone, for which that is paramount. And he also mentioned about the too much, you know, eyebrows around President, former President Kuruma's, you know, issue, right? Um, I want to say this. This is the time for us, the young one coming up, right, in the area of governance. I will speak largely on governance and even the young folks coming into politics, right? This is a time for us to speak through to power, okay. right? We should not be ashamed of telling our leaders their roles, their duties and responsibility. As he said, we want to see where our former leaders, right, not only from the presidencies, <coughs> mm -hmm. whosoever has been bestowed in that position, be you former president, vice president, speaker of the house, ministers, you should be within, you know, your country, right, where you have the, 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 the prigidity to sit down and invest what you have gained over the years or knowledge and to make more input into governance. But in this case, we have failed to do so based on our ego. Okay. Right? I will refer to you know my former president, president former president Kroma. Mm. I was the one really bringing out written, writing out that we want to see where our former president can be like Nigeria, you know, to take part, like what his predecessor, you know, has done, blessed memory, uh, former President Kaba, may his soul rest in peace. He laid down the foundation for Sierra Leone, mm. right? <clears throat> After his tenure, he went and sat peacefully, mm. without meddling into some national or petty politics. So you think he was meddling with national and party? I'm coming to my point. That was what I was expecting from former President Kuroma. Mm. He has made his part. He has done a lot for Sierra Leone. Mm. Everybody is giving him that accolade, right? So I was not expecting him, even the chairmanship he was owing for quite a long time. People call him all sorts of names, chairman for life, chairman for this, and the words he himself was using, mm. that if the APC were not settled, or the Munku politicians, he will raise jihad. Mm. These were not words for any leader. Okay. I condemn those words in the democratic states. As he said, we are borrowed democracy, and we are going by democracy. Mm. These were the issues we want our leaders to land, mm. right? You can be there, you follow states' protocols, or national issues. Former President Kumar was representing Sierra Leone in another form by bringing peace to other nations, by representing the ECOWAS in electoral you know, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, 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 observations. Mm. This were the role we were expecting them to play. And Sierra Leone, no matter what you say, we are integral in every issue because based on our experience, the level near war. So we should be a kind of learning point, okay. learning from you know, us, how we maintain our peace and how the cohesiveness, right? So that was what I was expecting. Okay. But for you to melt, be in politics at the same time, well, you can come over, just like what my brother mentioned, you have the Jimmy Carter's, you Barack Obama, they will come in when there is time, when it is necessary. Mm. But if any Jack and Jean will hear the name of former President Kuruma, you know, being that, is this, you know, this is the ego I'm talking about. Mm. Even now, the current we are, I'm sure he's learning from, you know, what is happening now. Because we want to see them around. Mm. We want to see our former leaders, right? Investing in Sierra Leone, bringing more, you know, pride to Sierra Leone, but not to meddle. If your time is gone, move out of politics. You can be there as a father a state person advising even your 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 your, your, your incumbents mm. right that was what but I was he expecting. resigned later that was later after pressure we have been mounts and the like mm. and all those you know meddling within him for me they was they, they were not giving good advice okay. and that is bad in politics right if you have either a state person don't try and you know narrow him to certain points okay. and this is the advice to all of us coming up if you are there and your time is gone Get yourself back. Allow okay. the state to run. All right. So before we go to Menkailo, because I remember uh, one of the press releases that his uh, office put out, and in that press release, he made it clear, because as you are saying that, 
people were expecting him to be active in like peace, uh, national uh, uh, matters. But in that press release, he, I think one of the paragraphs noted that he vehemently uh, refused to be saying things like people were uh, expecting him to do because he doesn't want his words to be taken out of context, uh, owing the fact that the things that were, people were saying surrounding him, that because of that, that's why he was silent. My brother, you see, I made my statement very earlier. That was what we were expecting mm. after the 20, I mean, 2018 election. I mean, we are there at, you know, um, 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 is it, uh, seven battalion before me. Mm. It said after the election, he will relinquish powers and get back to his village. Okay. You see, that was a very clear call, right? And the same thing continued to him. He can be a state person, right? This. It's not the only, you know, case mm. that we have Sierra Leone's face. But thank God now for the good democracy. Now we, we, we the, the, the death penalty is, the death penalty is no longer in our book, mm. right? As a other state person, for me, I always say, what has been, I mean, what has gone wrong cannot be reflected again. Okay. Let him come and say, my people, perhaps I've made a mistake in meddling or whatever my name has been mentioned. Let me apologize if there's a way. I'm not saying he's guilty. He's still proven innocent. But a word, that's, that's the only word. Hey, we want peace. We want this, right? This is not the time for us to open score. Okay. You know, I'm sorry for what has been done, for you advising me not to take part or meddling with other politics or even my interest to show. I'm sorry about that. All so right. So, to pick so, up from so there. let's hear from yeah. Mikhail that he's of the view that... Uh, President, former President Koroma was in a way meddling with uh, the politics and when uh, he, his time ended, he did not relinquish everything as he was supposed to. So what's your, your view on that? Yes, um, he has spoken as a civil society activist, okay. I'm a politician. All right. And so my statement <laughs> will be properly guided. Yeah? Okay. Um, Firstly, I agree with him to a very large extent that immediately after, or well, during the, the, on the day of polling, mm. President Kroma did say he was going to take the back seat three months after the elections. Yeah. You see, what is bad in politics and that uh, we as young politicians must not practice or encourage is sycophancy. Okay. Yeah. When you say I want to take the back seat and you have a group of sycophants, coming to tell you you are the only person that to hold this party exactly. together. Panogo, if you go, how go they now? That is very wrong. You understand? President Kroma is actually, I have interacted with him. He was like a mentor, and he's still a mentor. You know, we never separated paths. I was going to McKinney. You know, it's somebody that is visionary. Okay. We can sit and talk for as long as two, three hours. Mm. We can drive in his car. He's somebody very visionary. But the thing we must not tolerate around us is sycophancy. Okay. Some people will come and tell you things they want you to hear because they have all the benefit out of that. And that you should not tolerate. He was actually ready to relinquish his position as chairman and leader because he was no longer leader. Dr. Samuel Kamara was now leader. Mm. Even though our, posi our constitution made it very clear, that is why we advocated for our constitution to be changed. Mm -hmm. And that's when you have a, a leader of the party, that person should not be chairman. Because if you cannot command majority in the ballot box, you happen not to win an election, take the back seat and allow the party to go on. Mm. You know, we, we are reprimanded. Now people are beginning to appreciate us. You understand? With the current trend of politics, they are beginning to appreciate us. Mm. And so because they allow people who are sick of him to be around and tell him things that we are not correct, it affected him somehow. So, but, yeah. so with that, that means yeah. uh, but his, next, line, his next uh, accusation that yeah. he was meddling. No, well, I am not saying that. I am coming to that. Okay. I am making my conclusion. Sir. All right. Yes, of course, you cannot separate him. You cannot separate him at that time from politics mm. because he was chairman of the party. Okay. And because he was still chairman of the party, whatever you know, decision that the party may want to take, they have to revert to Dr. Hannes by coma. It is either meetings have been held in McKinney for discussions, mm. and so you cannot separate him from politics at that time. But there was a point when he decided to, to resign mm. before going to the convention. You understand? 
But then, you know, before his resignation, a lot of, I think, are pointing and accusations. But we also saw at the latter part, he was actually very engaged, you know, in promoting regional and sub-regional issues, okay. like elections monitoring, the consolidation of peace and democracy. He was heading some missions for ECOWAS and, uh, and the African Union. And that was the expectation by many Sierra Leoneans, yeah? yeah? And so it is still not too late. Uh, we still are expecting Dr. Anes by Kroma. Some of us are expecting him to be acquitted and discharged because I cannot see somebody who has served as a president for two terms having anything to do with a, a military coup. Okay. But what do you have to benefit? I think your responsibility could, should be, you know, holding the country together and helping your political party, Yanni, be to gain political Sankara. power through the constitution and the ballot box. Okay. Yeah, so I do you agree with him that... Uh, Former President Koroma needs to apologize to the people of Sierra Leone. No, well, you, you, can, you, can, you can only apologize for a crime that you are guilty of. Okay. I don't want to say anything about the treason trial. Yeah, no. President Koroma is an accused person. You know, an accused person. No, I don't think he meant because of the treason. No, it's not yeah. a treason. Because it's like uh, he all said. The bad names, just like we mentioned. Yeah, yeah, he but wants do you know, do you know there was a point that President Koroma did apologize to the entire membership of the All People's Congress? Yes, there was a point he did apologize when fingers were pointing at him. Mm. When we could not win the uh, 2018 elections. Okay. A lot of fingers were pointing at him that he selected Dr. Samura Kamara. He made a lot of mistakes. He apologized. Now, that was public. He what about in the case of not re relinquishing public. power three months, as he said? Like I, like he I, like I, also, like I also told you, mm. yeah? President Koma was willing to relinquish power three months. He made, a, he made a pronouncement. Nobody compelled him. Nobody forced him to make that sure. pronouncement. Yeah. But people took upon themselves. You saw a clip. There was a point, even at the latter part, somebody was crawling, begging, holding his feet. Hey, yeah, to, to do so the <laughs> reason why I'm, the, the reason why I'm asking that, that because uh, <laughs> at some point, even though he did not relinquish it, as he said, three months after the election because mm. of what you're saying, the mm. seco mm. and all that. But later, it's kind of like he realized that, no, I gave my word to these people, yes. and I need to... Okay, let me tell so you, after that, I can remember did, the he, did he apologize I can remember the ABC who was the, at the peak and thing of that transition period. Mm. There was this, sometimes a, an institution can go into, I mean, a situation of almost collapsing mm. if the transition process is not managed okay. very well. Okay. There was a period APC should have transitioned from the generation of Ernest by a new generation altogether. Sure. You see, we saw in the SLPP when uh, uh, John Benjamin and others, first it was Michael Kalo and others, there was a transition to John Benjamin and others. Okay. John Benjamin and others, they transitioned the party to another set of leaders. So we are expecting the same, the same transition thing. to have taken place. Okay. But when you have the covenant coming in the middle to say, hey, this is not left hand. That's a so problem. So he was also somehow loyal to them. <laughs> okay. He had not wanted to you know, leave a vacuum that would create another chaos in the party. Okay. So he was put in a position that is very, it was very difficult for him to handle. All right. But if I were Dr. Anis Bikoma, I was not going to listen to anybody. Okay. I had myself to look out for first. Before any other person. All and right. So, that's... yes, before, before, because we, time is almost uh, at our uh, back. So, um, I will just read a few messages and you will respond. We we'll wrap up and also you respond and we we'll wrap up. Um, more, uh, more lie, war boy by Kamara is saying, uh, Mr. Minkailu, you are wrong to say that. Uh, police has the right to deny someone bail because he or she is accused of uh, involvement in Kush trading. If he or she deserves bail, whether at the police station, uh, as long as he or she meets the bail conditions, the police should not deny the person bail. And also there is reason why bail is there in the first place to increase the police need to uh, the person again to answer questions they will bring him or she, uh, he or she back according to the bail conditions set by the police. Uh, this is not a tyranny state and politicians should not dictate whether the rule of law should apply and finally the vice president is head of the police council but should not interfere in the day-to-day -day running of the police because the police is uh, answerable to the laws of the land not to any individual no matter 
uh, who you are or the position you hold in the country. I don't know if you listened when we clarified why the police, uh, why pre uh, from a, uh, sorry, vice why president. vice president made that pronouncement, but Minkail will respond to that. Um, and uh, Abdul Rashid Dankona is saying EBK is one of the principal problem in Sierra Leone. And uh, embraces Jonathan Kanu is saying EBK is not the problem. This government is creating unnecessary tension in the country, leaving their obligation to fulfill the bread and butter issue. So I think that will be the last message I will take. We just in, I'll give you two minutes to respond and give your parting shot and also two minutes. Thank you very much. Yeah. You know, I, I will not waste time on this. Mm. Firstly, I am not the one that made the statement that the police should not grant bail. Uh, this is a statement that was made by the vice president, and the vice president did justify his statement. That he's not saying the court should not grant bail, but when people are accused and taken to the police stations or arrests are made, people must not go there to use their influence to, to grant them bail. Sure, sure. The society will not treat the issue seriously. And besides, let us also know that people do not understand the magnitude of a, a, what a state of public health emergency is, in fact. <laughs> if they understand what a state of public health emergency is on Kush, and they are accused of Kush, do not think about a bail at the police station. They should know. That is why we are very much critical about that. Mm -hmm. They should understand what a state of public health emergency on Kush is. Yeah? Mm -hmm. EBK is one of the problems in Sierra Leone. Well, I cannot say so. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I do not have the justifications to say it's one of the problems in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. As far as I am concerned, it's an elderly statesman who needs to take the back seat from politics completely and just enjoy the elderly statesmanship okay. and should not allow people to come and to dictate, dictate for him what should happen. Right. We, are, we have seen other president. <laughs> like you have said, President Kaba was very quiet on, up until his demise. We saw the role played by EBK. EBK work, did work on foot, you know, from National Stadium to Kisi Road Cemetery to lay him to rest. Okay. He gave him with final respect. All right. EBK is not the problem. The government of Sahel Leone is the problem. Well, I think we need another debate altogether to really analyze if the government of Saloon is the actually problem. the problem. But we've seen circumstances in which, after elections, we saw the commissions of inquiry and we saw the high handedness of government going after opposition politicians. That also added to the problem. All right. Thank you so much. So you two have two minutes. Yeah, please. I think my brother has said it all on the police. What the vice president said... I mean, you, just like what you said, he has justified the point that whosoever is being nabbed cannot be released in the custody of police. Okay. Let them charge the matter to court and expedite the matter. Mm -hmm. So, at, and he also mentioned that if the matter has been charged to court, your lawyer can go there okay. and agitate on your behalf if yeah. the judge so, think it's well to release that individual. I think that I think should have put exactly. that to rest, and so, especially with the national emergency also thank again. Thank you. And, so, and let people understand that that was what I was saying. Let now the Anthony General's office and the you know tax force create the laws within this you know public health emergency, not to which owns you know individual. Other people. Okay. And EBK is a problem for me. I don't think so. We have laws, right? My only point why I mentioned his name for him to be an elderly state person. That was what I was expecting and mm. others. Yes, also. and you two pointed your reason exactly. out. Exactly. So for me, if we come back, you know, that was what we were expecting. We want to be cohesive. Okay. We want to be united. We want to see where, you know, position can checkmate. Right, the ruling uh, uh, party in governance constructively, constructively okay. right? Not by you know, flaming fires. All right, thank you so language. much because you of know, time. Exactly, um, I want to express my th thanks and gratitude to Solomon Sundu, a uh, civil society activist, and also uh, Minkailo Kuruma, who is a political analyst and a social commentator for joining me today. And uh, this is where we bring the cut down of today's show. And you have been watching front page here on AYV television, Ch Channel 33 and on Radio 101.7 uh, FM and also our Facebook uh, page.